Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 1 for June the 7th, 2020. We begin a new unit today for our summer quarterly. Um, lesson 1 entitled Wisdom in Proverbs. And our topic for today taken from the adult quarterly is listen up. The devotional reading is taken from Psalm 34. Uh, verses 11 through 18. Our background scripture is taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 1 and we'll be studying uh, from the first chapter of Proverbs today. Um, chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 verses 7 and 8 verses 10 and 11 uh, verses 20 through 22 and verses uh, 32 and 33. Our key verse today is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 1 uh, verse 7 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to recognize uh, the value of godly wisdom for discerning the direction in which one should go. Secondly, to value godly wisdom in the choices you make. And then thirdly, to make a conscious effort to apply the standards of wisdom to a specific choice that needs to be made. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, The Beginning of Knowledge. Uh, the second outline is entitled, don't give in and the third outline is entitled listen to wisdom and so we certainly thank and praise God uh, for this uh, great opportunity to be able to share God's Word with you and we are praying um, even as we uh, many are quarantined still uh, during this pandemic we're praying for your families uh, before I close today, I do want to offer a prayer for healing uh, for our nation, for our country, uh, and certainly for men's hearts. But uh, we want to begin today. We have quite a bit of ground to cover in uh, our outlines, but um, as we begin this summer quarter uh, of lessons, we will be uh, uh, digging deep into uh, wisdom, uh, knowledge, and understanding the differences uh, of those words. Um, and we also want to be able to unpack uh, for us today how to incorporate um, wisdom, teachings, biblical scripture passages um, into our uh, daily lives. And so even though we are sort of jumping around through um, the book of Proverbs uh, through various verses. We encourage you to read all of it of chapter 1. We encourage you now to uh, perhaps get your Bible and uh, be prepared to take some notes and we're certainly going to give you some scripture references today uh, in addition to the text. So one of the things I found to be helpful uh, as we um, as believers of God intend to grow is that we have to stay with the Word of God uh, in spite of everything we have to study as never before uh, what God is saying through his word but I want to begin today in the biblical context I want to read a portion of this from our uh, lesson quarterly and then just a few sentences from our lesson standard Proverbs um, is a translation of the Hebrew word masho, uh, which means a saying. Uh, the book of Proverbs is literally a book of sayings. Uh, Solomon uh, clearly wrote chapters 1 through 29. Uh, there are two other people who are mentioned as writers. Uh, one would be Agor, uh, the son of Jacob, uh, J A K E H is credited with writing chapter 30 and then King uh, Lemuel is given credit for chapter 31 
so uh, some Bible scholars believe that Agor and King uh, Lemuel were pen names Solomon used. So, um, wisdom is personified as a, a woman in Proverbs. You can see that in Proverbs chapter 1 verses 20 through 33, Proverbs chapter 8 verses 1 through 36, uh, and then uh, Proverbs chapter, one, chapter 9 verses 1 through 6. So women are uh, noticeably absent from it, appearing primarily in relation to the young men uh, the book addresses and so again uh, we want to just take a few sentences from our lesson quarterly uh, the wisdom of each saying is situational and I want you to stick a pin in that because we're going to talk about that in relation to these sayings if you will uh, in the Hebrew um, uh, that there are specific issues that come up in our lives and and what I love about the book of Proverbs it it highlights certain uh, situations that uh, uh, young men uh, even older men young women older women are are experiencing um, each and every day in our lives and perhaps this uh, uh, these are examples uh, uh, you might find them that there's something that uh, you have not had experience with but uh, be that as it may, uh, we do have situations in our lives where we are going to have to make decisions uh, and those decisions are going to come from a particular place of understanding. So we want to keep that in mind. So these, uh, the wisdom of each saying in our lesson text is situational. Biblical prover proverbs are as well, uh, though they are more than just good advice. They are godly advice based on the crucial premise that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so I just want to stop right there. But we want to get to this lesson today uh, as we talk about in this first unit uh, wisdom in Proverbs. And I just want to give you a definition of the uh, word wisdom from the gospel, uh, the book of James. Um, uh, chapter 3 um, and I want to start this at verse 13 and then we're going to get into our outlines very quickly so the Bible says who is wise and understanding among you let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts do not boast and lie against the truth. Verse 15. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Verse 16. For there, where envy and self seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace so james gives us some uh some perspective about uh what wisdom is and and not only what it is but but where it comes from and all of us uh, in our speakings and in our sayings if you will or in our conduct it's infused by uh, a force if you will and so as we look at this uh, lesson today we want to uh, uh, take note of the fact that the wisdom that we are talking about uh, and that we are encouraging you to obtain uh, is that which comes from above uh, and so we want to get into these outlines uh, today. Uh, the first outline is entitled The Beginning of Knowledge. And this is taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, uh, and then verse 7. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. The Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, uh, for understanding words of insight, 
Verse 3, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, and knowledge uh, and discretion to the young. And then verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so we're looking at um, uh, four different aspects of verse one. The first, uh, the uh, the verses that follow uh, will be filled with a number of sayings or proverbs, if you will. Second, these sayings were reflections of of the life of Solomon. Uh, the Lord had blessed him. Uh, with great wisdom. You can look at 1 Kings chapters 3 and 4. Uh, third, there are, uh, we are reminded that David, the greatest king of Israel, was Solomon's father. Uh, finally, Solomon had a period of civil war. Uh, we can see that in 1 Kings chapter 1 and 2. Uh, and he was king of all Israel. Solomon provided a list of benefits for the student of wisdom in verses 2 and 3. And since the uh, Hebrew poetry relied in part on repetition, Solomon made uh, one statement for the student to begin verses 2 and 3 and then repeated it in a slightly different form uh, in the second part of the verses. So in verse 2, Solomon emphasized that his proverbs would help the student gain wisdom. And then in verse 3, the emphasis was on putting that wisdom into practice with right living. Uh, just want to pause right there uh, and just talk about the fact that here's a man uh, reflecting on life, uh, reflecting on uh, how to be successful. Uh, and we note that Solomon, uh, God gave him uh, an abundance of wisdom uh, that surpassed uh, 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 many of his contemporaries. Um, and, and God blessed him with insight uh, that he might be able to understand how uh, to be successful. But when we talk about wisdom... Um, uh, the purpose of Proverbs is to guide the reader into wisdom. Uh, uh, it, it's a word with many nuances. And so it is related to the intellect and the control of human behavior. So it was a way of thinking about reality that enables one to pursue what is good in life. So through wisdom... God reveals what the values of life are and how they can be achieved. But when we contrast that with, uh, with the simple, as it is mentioned in our verses, the word is parallel uh, in this verse by a young man. It refers to the untutored or inexperienced, those uh, lacking intellectual powers. And so... Wisdom is a matter of practical godliness. And so we want to make sure that that uh, uh, even as uh, we want to talk about young people and we want to talk about uh, 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 how to mature and how to grow, we have to be able to uh, gain some insight or some wisdom. We define that for you in James chapter 3. And we want to be able to draw the wisdom that is from above, uh, 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 from God, so we can put these things into uh, practice. And if you look at Solomon here in the text, in these verses, uh, as we talked about, uh, here is a man who went to God. Uh, you all know the story. He went to God and he asked God uh, uh, how to lead. He didn't know how to lead uh, God's people. He didn't know how to manage uh, 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 himself in the face of leadership. And so it, it was a blessing for him to seek God out and ask God, how do I do this? 
And so what God did and what God was impressed with Solomon, uh, since he didn't ask for riches and he didn't ask for uh, defeat of his enemies uh, and, and these types of things, he genuinely did not know what he was doing. Uh, though he was in a position of leadership, he didn't know how to conduct himself uh, as king. And so God blessed him with insight, uh, with wisdom that was from above. Uh, and so uh, Solomon was able to now understand how to do the job, how to be a leader, how to lead God's people. And I think it's worth noting that that if we're going to make decisions in life, uh, and I believe this is where the text is leading us to understand that we need to gain wisdom and instruction. And uh, as the verses are pointing to us, uh, it, it, is, it, it shifts from gaining these things and then it, it moves to those who would want to teach and those who are in a, in a position as Solomon was. Uh, and so we have to be able to be instructed so we can instruct others. In other words, if, if we are not good followers, how of, of, of God, and if we are not good followers of, of the Word of God, how are we going to be good leaders? Uh, people are watching us uh, and how we conduct ourselves and then they base uh, uh, their findings on the facts that if they should listen to you or not. And so uh, this is the, the, the thing, the, the two prong effect that I want you to see here in this outline that we need to gain this. And sometimes as James would point, point out in the first chapter, uh, of his epistle he said if any man lacks wisdom he should he should ask God and so this is what we have to do if we want to get something from God we need to talk to God but as I looked at this lesson and as I thought about what Solomon was engaged in doing I I, I, I think it's necessary for us as the people of God whether we are young people or not, that it's important who you flank yourself with. It is very important uh, uh, who you're hanging with. It's very important, important who you're spending time with. And I, I want us to understand that some of our circles are not conducive for us to grow. Uh, some of our circles and some of our uh, uh, advisors or counselors, if you will, are not leading us in terms of godly wisdom and so it's very important that that we focus on the present uh, of our lives the present day but it's very important that we also look at our futures and so I think that's important uh, to note that uh, and I'll give you an example as a minister it's important that uh, uh, I have a circle around me or influences around me that not uh, just those who preach the gospel as I do but I want to uh, flank myself with people who have uh, paved the way or who have gone before me or who have the has the experience of where I endeavor to go those are the kinds of people that uh, I'd like to keep in my circle because they can provide counsel for me as a, a young man and as a, a young minister uh, uh, how to carry and conduct myself with God's business and his people uh, uh, and I think that's very important for all of us we need to have in our circles people who can help shape us and and give wisdom and this is what the uh, uh, part of our lesson outline is tell is telling us here um, is that uh, uh, we are uh, receiving instruction, we are gaining it, we are receiving this. But I kept on looking at verse 4. So Solomon moves from those seeking wisdom to those teaching about wisdom. So teachers of wisdom 
are tasked with helping the unlearned gain insights into making good decisions and helping the young to gain and properly applied knowledge. He also reminded the teachers of wisdom in verses 5 uh, and 6. This is not a part of our printed text, but again, please read all of chapter 1 of the book of Proverbs. So uh, they too, the teachers were learners. They never stopped learning. Uh, they would be able to use new learnings to, to better understand timeless truths and some of the great questions of their day. And so this is where your circle uh, of, of, of influence would be helpful uh, to us. And so uh, I have uh, pastors, uh, leaders who uh, uh, have uh, pastored and retired for a number of years who have uh, 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 who know the ropes, if you will. And so it's important for me to get on the phone and call them and sit down and listen to what they have to say and how do we address our culture and how do we address uh, different leadership styles and practices. And, and so these are the things that Solomon is trying to get across. And because, again, we have to all make decisions whether we are in leadership or not but certainly as a king as in Solomon's case uh, Solomon found time to reflect and so when we get to verse 7 of chapter 1 of Proverbs uh, the Bible says that the fear of the of the Lord is the beginning that reverential fear that that uh, uh, sitting in awe of who God is and and, and, and what God is able to do, giving God place or space in our lives, making him the center uh, of our lives and seeking him out for instructions. You know, I was thinking about this earlier today as a boy growing up and, you know, uh, my parents, uh, they would put uh, uh, their children in the car and we would pray before we went someplace and my mother had a, a, a practice, a discipline of always setting her Bible on the dashboard of the car. I remember that as a boy. And so uh, the, the and, and, and finally one day I asked, why are you putting the Bible on the dashboard? And, and she said, you want the Lord out in front. And so that gave us children some uh, uh, concepts early on that they were thinking about in their travels that they wanted the Lord ahead of them. And so uh, mom would put the Bible in the dash and we went wherever we were going with the word of God in front of us. And that's very important that we keep God in front of us. And, 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 and that is the beginning of when we be start to become a uh, quote unquote wise that we are taking into account God in our everyday lives if we're going and uh, uh, in doing something or we're planning to do something James would also say something like this if it's the Lord's will so invoking God into uh, our goings and we should we should not be so arrogant in life and making plans how do you think God feels when we say uh, that we're going to make plans and we've never even consulted him if he's going to wake us up the next day or if we're going to make it safe. How do you think God feels when we are doing things without ever talking to him and asking him if it's okay or is he going to bless this endeavor or, or, or are we going to fail miserably? And so I think it makes good sense, practical sense for us to include God. And so but the question is asked here, what are the differences between knowledge and wisdom? And so when we think about knowledge, we think about intellectual understanding and uh, personal or uh, emotional experience. And we should also understand that knowledge is, is attributed uh, to God and human beings. So uh, God's knowledge is, is said to be omniscient. And, and so when we think about uh, wisdom, as we said earlier, and, and just a little bit more clarity on what we're talking about for wisdom is that we need to have the ability to discern uh, or to make good judgments and insight. Uh, uh, and this, this uh, 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 speaks to the, the soundness of our actions. And so 
uh, I, I, you know, you if you've ever did something in your life and it didn't work out, have you ever heard it said or said it uh, of yourself that if I had followed my first mind, what what does that mean uh, when you hear people? Uh, uh, say that after they have made a mistake if I had followed my first mind could it be that God was speaking to you could it be that the Spirit of God was speaking some wisdom to you in that decision-making uh, endeavor to go a different route or to stop or don't go uh, uh, this way don't go that way go this way uh, what if we had followed that direction or followed our first mind, uh, where would we land or where would we have uh, uh, ended up? And so I, I think it's important as we, uh, the next few weeks, I should just tell you that we're going to be looking at the book of Proverbs in a deeper way. So let's get used to it. Let's get some traction on where we're going and what we're talking about. Uh, in terms of this wisdom today. We want to get to the second outline that's entitled, Don't Give In. This is taken from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, verse 10, and 11. The Bible says, verse 8, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Verse 10, My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them verse 11 if they say come along with us let's lie and wait for innocent blood let's ambush some harmless soul this is huge this is huge today and as we talk about Solomon and his reflection uh, we do know from history uh, he didn't follow the things that the Lord had given him to do uh, uh, he had a good start. He had a good running, uh, uh, but he made some critical mistakes. And so we have to be able to listen to uh, the instruction that is provided. So we marvel at how Solomon used everyday experiences in his writing. In verse 8, he used child rearing as the focus of his continued teaching about wisdom. Uh, as stated above, Solomon uh, reference males almost exclusively in his writing so it is not surprising that he refers to a son and that's huge for our young men today and as we see what's going on around the world we're trying to reach them before death does we're trying to reach them uh, uh, while they're in the process of making decisions uh, uh, about their lives and it's good to be able to give them uh, uh, parental advice but we have to insert godly advice uh, where there is none we have to be able to uh, 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 shape the culture and shape the actions of young men who make decisions uh, and those decisions un sometimes affect young women uh, and then after that those decisions uh, 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 begin to affect uh, children or potential children and, and other things that come into that circle just because we made a decision uh, to do a particular thing then we have to also deal with the outcome and so even as the people of God uh, as Solomon notes here in verse 10 he says my son if sinners entice you uh, 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 don't consent don't give in to them uh, 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 don't compromise yourself and this is something that all of us as Christians and I, I, I found this out quickly uh, uh, when the Lord saved me years ago uh, he didn't put me on some planet uh, I was left in the neighborhood or I was left in the uh, uh, on the same job if you will and around the same people so I had to continue to deal with my past 
though God had given me a new future. I had to uh, uh, continue to speak to my past and people in my past to help them understand this is a new day. This is a new future. This is a new rule. Uh, this is a new governing principle. And so we won't be able to move out of the neighborhood, if you will. You will not be able to escape temptation. Now that we have all of this technology, uh, it's very easy to find you and for people to find you and to look for you and to seek you out that they might uh, persuade you. Uh, uh, and we have to stand our ground. This is the the some of the... Uh, uh, assets if you will of knowing what the word of God says that's one aspect but then you have to stand on what you understand and this is where it gets a little dicey for us as Christians because we don't want to offend anybody and we don't want to uh, uh, hurt anybody's feelings and we don't want to be uh, a seen as someone who's a standout or, 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 or who is uh, thinking to be somehow better than the next person but 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 the Bible is clear if these individuals are uh, uh, seeking you out to do things that you know the Lord have saved you from then the Bible is telling you do not give in so it sounds like to me you have some authority you have some power and you have some help from the Lord. Uh, I, I, I think if, if we if we understand this, if the Lord is telling you to do something, uh, I believe he will help you to keep the commandments. I believe he will help me to maintain my integrity uh, uh, as a Christian. But I have to ask God uh, and I have to alert God through in prayer Lord, I'm in over my head or I'm in trouble. You know where you're weak. You know what the Lord delivered you from. Those are going to be the places and the people who come back to you. So keep those things in mind. So uh, we won't be able to escape, if you will. But if you look at the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, when Jesus was praying for his disciples, he asked the Father not to take them out of the world. Don't take them out of the, the, the sinful environments that they're in, but leave them and keep them. And so we want to be able to understand that God has the capacity uh, and God has the wisdom to uh, 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 reveal or to share with us to keep us where he wants us to be kept. So verse 10 Again, don't go with them. Learn how to say no. Learn how to say uh, no thank you. Learn how to say that's not good for me. Learn how to let it go. And so, uh, and, and, and sometimes our problems uh, 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 are in surrounding not only the things that the Lord have delivered us from, but also the environments of those individuals. And so in those things that uh, 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 we certainly were delivered from. And so we have to understand that we have to make a break uh, with those things and also the people that those things are associated with. Remember I told you earlier, it's important who you flank yourself with. Keep that in mind. Verse 11, this is huge. If they say, right? Come, come along with us. Let's lie in wait for innocent blood. For someone who has done nothing. For someone who is innocent. For someone who is uh, unknowingly uh, 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 just going about their lives. And then we seek to take advantage uh, of them. Uh, uh, let's shed innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. This kind of thing goes on every day. Uh, it goes on particularly uh, in leadership. We see a lot of that. Uh, we see a lot of that uh, uh, in churches sometimes where you have cliques. If you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you can see that, that taking shape. Uh, and Paul was, was very upset with how uh, they were treating one another. And so we have to be careful uh, uh, 
Uh, you don't have to go along to get along. Uh, and so these are practical things that, that we need to incorporate. And the reason why uh, uh, that we want to be able to understand this and appreciate this is in Galatians uh, chapter 6 verse 7. I hope that you will read that. Also Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. And this just talks about uh, uh, our freedom and, and the use of that freedom. Why, why we have that. Also I want you to look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, verse 15 and 16 and then 2nd Peter uh, chapter 2 uh, verses 20 through 22 one of the things that if we can just shift a little bit to talk spiritually a minute about the works of the devil uh, he doesn't tell us uh, the outcome of the things that he encourages us to do he doesn't remind us that God said uh, whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Uh, we don't think about the fact that uh, uh, when we dig ditches for people, that that might be your hole that you're digging. Uh, 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 we we don't think about the demise that we plan for others might be yours. Uh, and so uh, we have to stay grounded if you will if God wants you to have something uh, there is no devil anywhere that can prevent you from obtaining that but when we get these blessings uh, just like Solomon the Lord blessed him with all of that wisdom and all of that knowledge and all of that understanding people came from far and wide to hear Solomon's wisdom but he changed he determined in his mind that he could he could do other things serve other gods and and God warned him that if you don't walk up right before me as your father David did then all of this elaborate construction of this temple I'm gonna tear it down and that's exactly what happened because he didn't heed the wisdom that was in him he didn't uh, follow his first mind if you will he didn't grasp the fact that God was holding him accountable uh, and so the thing that uh, he enjoyed ended up being his demise the thing that he would not stop doing cost him his leadership divided uh, the kingdom uh, uh, did uh, uh, irreparable damage uh, to folks lives who watched him uh, who probably listened to him uh, but Solomon uh, couldn't keep the commandments he could not walk up right uh, before God the way that God wanted him to and so we have to be careful when we are doing things that we think uh, it I've never heard God say to me that I don't know if he's omniscient if he knows what's going on how is it that we think we have secrets if he knows if he never slumbers and he never sleeps the darkness is as light to him how is it that we are trying to do things that we believe God does not know or he has not seen and so we have to be careful and this is what this instruction is 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 encouraging us to take heed um, so this is all practical but the question is asked here today why does it seem that Christians are giving in to sin easier and easier so as I thought about that and I'll share a passage of scripture with you perhaps we are deceived by God's silence or his uh, perceived inaction we uh, in action that we believe that uh, sometimes maybe God is taking too long and so maybe I just want to just step over here for a little bit and I'll come back uh, and, and so uh, but the Lord was warning Israel the Spirit of the Lord reminded me of something back over in Deuteronomy chapter 8 you can read it at your leisure uh, uh, but I was particularly in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 through 5 and just looking at the spirit of forgetfulness after we've been blessed the spirit of forgetfulness forgetting where God have brought us from 
why are we compromising do you know uh, it it I've never it's never been explained to me uh, in a percentage or in some type of uh, a human way of how much work God has done in my life to get me where I am today and so we should not take it lightly the work that has gone in uh, the effort sometimes when I'm praying I thank God for his efforts uh, toward me he didn't have to do it uh, and so uh, we we need to be mindful that the things that we are uh, going in the wrong direction to do uh, the Lord saved you from that the Lord brought you out with a mighty and an outstretched arm the Lord delivered you and so when we find these weaknesses taking shape I'm talking to me now uh, when, the, when we find these uh, weaknesses appearing in our lives it's a good time to call on the name of Jesus we don't have to make that backward practice uh, our norm we don't have to give in and, and sometimes we don't have enough strength uh, and enough power uh, and so because we haven't asked God uh, uh, to anoint us uh, uh, to keep us we haven't involved God into the matter and so now you're left to struggle with it alone and so we need to remember here this is the, some of the things that I uh, thought about as this question raised in my mind why is it easy why is it easier and easier uh, but I, I, I will tell you this that the Holy Spirit will not give up on you and he will not give in you might get a heavy chastening uh, because the Lord knows that you know better because he taught you better you might bring God to you in a different way to help you understand you might an affliction might come up on you as a result of of chastening you you should read uh, uh, the books of uh, first and second Peter uh, and then you remember uh, first Corinthians chapter 11 something we we quote when we are taking the Lord's Supper uh, and so we want to remember these things as we go forward and, and keep in mind don't beat yourself up because of the the things that you might have done or the way that you might have fallen I just encourage you to get up from there and I just encourage you to assert uh, the position that you have in Christ as a believer to the uh, the power and the equipment that that God is able to provide even the wisdom uh, in our decision making so keep those things in mind it's a little lengthy but that question just stuck with me why does it seem that way why are we not drawing off of who we are to stand our ground but yet yielding to go backward and so our final outline is entitled listen to wisdom this is taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 1 uh, verses 20 through 22 and verses 32 through 33 and again from the NIV translation out in the open wisdom calls aloud she raises her voice in the public square on the top of the wall she cries out at the city gate she makes her speech how long will you who are simple love your simple ways and how long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge the good questions verse 32 for the waywardness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them but whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm so in keeping with some of the characteristics of Hebrew poetry Solomon uh, personified wisdom in verse 20 um, we also see this personification in Proverbs chapter 3 uh, verses 15 through 18 uh, again Proverbs chapter 8 and then uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verses 1 through 12 so wisdom is not something that is hidden well, we literally see wisdom in many aspects uh, of our daily lives so in Solomon's day uh, much of daily life revolved around interactions in the city squares the gates and 
and also in marketplaces. So we need to keep in mind that uh, many cities at the time of Solomon's writing were surrounded by uh, fortified walls. So these interactions offered an opportunity to learn. Wisdom was present and those who pay attention would learn much. Wisdom is present with us today. It's all around us. It's speaking to us. Uh, it's teaching us uh, that, that, that these are the consequences of, of sinful behavior. It's teaching us. Don't you know that you've learned something about the Lord since he saved you. That he saved you that you might live. If God had left us in the condition that we were, don't you know we would have possibly died? We wouldn't be here today. So wisdom was speaking to us, uh, 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 and God was using that wisdom and his power to. So we have to, 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 to embrace that God wants us to live, uh, and God wants us to embrace uh, 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 eternal life. God wants us to enjoy life. And so, but, but without his wisdom and without his guidance, we will be destroyed. We will die. Uh, a, a lot of the things that, that, that we called fun, uh, our fun before the Lord saved us, was, was nothing short of self-destruction. That's all it was. And if the Lord had allowed us to continue on the path that we were on, we would have self-destructed. And so this is what wisdom is doing now. And so if you look now, we are trying to help others understand. Jesus put it this way in John chapter 14. He said, I am the way and the, and the truth and the life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And so God has given us something that we don't know how to live and don't know how to use what God gave us without him. Jesus is the way and if we didn't learn anything about his life Jesus life when he came we missed something because he was not just doing things uh, uh, for people who needed things to be done for them he did those things that God ordained him to do but he lived away in front of us so we would know how to do it. That wisdom presented itself. That wisdom had all kinds of people following it. And Jesus never committed sin. He never went back on what he was instructed to do. He completed his task all the way to the cross, all the way to the grave, all the way to uh, 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 him being raised from the dead. He did everything that he was instructed to do. And then Philippians chapter 2 helps us to understand that God bestowed upon him a name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, you all know the story, you know the account. So wisdom has much to offer us today. The benefits of godly wisdom has much to offer any society if we choose uh, to listen but if we don't want to be the people that listen uh, and accept the things that God is saying to us then we are going to die there is no way around this thing God has set the table for us to live this thing on his terms uh, Jesus said it in John chapter 15, apart from me, ye can do nothing. And so we have to learn how to listen. Uh, Jesus went on to say, take my yoke upon you and learn. And this is what we have to do. We have to take the word of God upon us and we have to learn for his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. And so if we want to live, we must pay attention. We must wise up. We must listen. The Lord is calling us. So many times we tell God to wait. We tell God we are not ready yet. But that wisdom is telling you the day is the day of salvation. The word of God is clear in Hebrews. The day you hear it, my voice, saith the Lord, harden not your heart. Wisdom tells us to come now. Wisdom tells us to 
take the opportunity that God has given us and to give our lives to him. Wisdom does not tell us to wait until we get ready. That is not the instruction that we are receiving. So what are we doing in the meantime if we're not accepting what God has to say? So these are the things that are, are, are priceless for us today. And as we engage uh, the next few weeks uh, uh, through various uh, passages of Proverbs, I hope you understand uh, uh, and I, I looked at Solomon uh, finally I'll share this with you uh, if he had listened if you read 1st Chronicles chapter 6 and then read 1st Chronicles chapter 7 Solomon went through a lengthy discussion and prayer with God about all of the conditions if these things would happen to Israel then he expected God to respond in a certain way you can read it for yourself but God told him if you don't walk up right before me you see so you can't distract God with these things that you want to offer him God was required he didn't need to tell God how to keep Israel God had a historical account that he brought Israel out of bondage long before Solomon came on the scene. God had been keeping Israel through the wilderness and through all kind of uh, uh, issues that came. Uh, if you go back over into uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, as I referred you to earlier, God didn't even let their shoes wear out. And so he always knew how to keep his people, but his people would not listen to him. And that was the reason why Solomon failed miserably uh, uh, even with what he asked God to do for him because he couldn't stay the course. And that's very important today. So I encourage you today, uh, I challenge you today to let this scripture speak to you and speak to uh, uh, your circle uh, in a way that, that helps you to embrace this wisdom and listen whatever you don't have in terms of your understanding in terms of your wisdom that's a case for prayer to me that's a thing that you might want to label before the Lord and say Lord I don't understand Lord I don't know and let the Lord reveal let him pour out on you an abundance of understanding and wisdom so I hope trust and pray that you will embrace this lesson uh, it's a beautiful practical lesson for us that we desperately need today let me pray for us now father in the name of jesus again we thank you for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard and father we are we are facing some turbulent times in our culture today we are facing some turbulent time in our families today and we're facing some health challenges we are facing uh, some some issues uh, uh, with our economic situation there are just issues all around us. But Father, I know that you have the wisdom uh, to impart to us, to teach us how we should maneuver and how to navigate in these perilous times. We can hear wisdom calling out today. And I just pray that you would circumcise our ears that we might be able to hear, circumcise our hearts that we might be able to become more sensitive and conducive to your will and to your instruction and to the promises that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we just thank you for your word today. It is true today. And if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is in need of special prayer for whatever their circumstances are, I didn't come to counsel you today but I know father you already know about their conditions and I'm just asking you to visit them let the Holy Spirit visit them in their hearts and in their minds speak to them on their bed of affliction I speak life and and over their conditions today in the name of Jesus those of us who are out of work and those of us who are fighting all kind of challenges today we rebuke the enemy who comes to rob and to to kill and to destroy the things that you have uh, uh, bountifully bestowed upon us even as believers we are heirs and joint heirs to the kingdom of our God we thank you for Jesus most of all for the sacrifice of his life the shedding of his blood that we might have this right to the tree of life we believe he got up on the third day with all power in his hand and we believe and we are watching wisdom work today in our very lives today and Father, we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. 
Amen. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.